Technology is redefining what it means to be a human, and we are allowing that to happen. Hello, my name is Abby Haluska, and I'm a junior here at Hobart High School. Now as a teenager, I'm gonna be real with you all, I'm incredibly dependent on technology, and I know that. In fact, I don't even remember the last day that I have gone without using either my phone or my laptop every few hours. And that may seem a little bit extreme, but I'm sure that my relationship with technology is similar to many of the relationships with technology in this room today. We, as humans, tend to depend on technology to provide us with the information and the resources that we need to make our lives a little bit easier and more interesting. But the relationship between humans and technology has not always been this way. So human interaction with technology began about 10 million years ago when early humans were using stones and antlers to create tools that would aid their survival. Eight to nine million years later, and technology was revolutionized through the creation and the manipulation of fire. At this point in history, humans created technology out of necessity. They created what they needed in order to survive. But today, our creations have a little bit of a different motive. Today, we create what we want. Now I'm going to say that technology has catalyzed human progression in magnificent ways, from advancements being made in the medical field and healthcare, to advancements and milestones being made in education. Technology is working for the betterment of our society. But that put aside, it's undeniable that humans are being changed through technology. Compared to our ancestors 10 million years ago, we are less intuitive and inventive than we once were. We are more creative than our ancestors, and today, survival is based a little less on predation and a little bit more on innovation. I will be focusing about or on one of the greatest products of technology's progression, which is the creation of artificial intelligence, or AI. So in brief terms, artificial intelligence is human-like intelligence integrated within technology. An AI is a robot, a machine, or any piece of technology with the ability to think on its own and make its own decisions. But how does this apply to us? Whether we realize it or not, we depend on artificial intelligence every single day. And I'm going to give you an example. Who in here watches Netflix? I think we all watch Netflix. And although Netflix itself is not an AI, it does manipulate artificially intelligent algorithms to do things like predict what movies you should watch next, or personalize your channel to fit your personal preferences. An additional AI that we rely on is Siri. Every time we ask Siri questions like, hey, what's the weather gonna be like? We are asking artificial intelligence to provide us with answers. And in return, these AIs are depending on human input in order to guide them in the right directions. But technology's dependence on humanity changed in 2017 with the creation of an AI known as AlphaGo Zero. So AlphaGo Zero is the current world record holder in the game of Go, which is a board game that has been around for more than 3,000 years. But at the time of AlphaGo Zero's creation, its neural network contained no previous knowledge about the game of Go. So this AI did not know how to play the game or even what the game was about. Given three days of reinforcement learning, AlphaGo Zero was able to surpass the abilities of AlphaGo Lee which was an AI that in 2016 beat the human world record holder in the game of Go. 40 days of reinforcement learning and AlphaGo Zero was officially named the world's best Go player as it surpassed the skills and abilities of all previous Go world champions. So it took this AI 40 days to exceed 3,000 years worth of human practice and it did so without any human input. Now you may be asking yourself, how does a board game playing AI affect me? And trust me, I asked myself that exact same question. Until I realized that AlphaGo Zero's accomplishments are representative of a bigger image. AlphaGo Zero's ability to evolve on its own represent the increasing independence that's being integrated within technology. For years on end, we have been defined by our superior intelligence when compared to the forms of intelligence around us. We have been distinguished as independent beings, and if we are dependent on other factors, we are in control of those factors. But now we have created something that is just as independent as us, if not more. We have created technology to be just as intelligent as us, in which our intelligence no longer makes us unique. 
And AlphaGo Zero is not the only AI to become more human-like in ways that make humans a little less human-like. So this is Fedor, and Fedor is a Russian AI. Now, Fedor was created with the objective of replacing dangerous human labor, like going to outer space. But despite his good intentions, Fedor has some potentially unnecessary skills. And to further elaborate on that, Fedor knows how to walk, drive, use tools, and even shoot two guns at once with incredible precision. But prior to Fedor's existence, human beings were the only beings on this earth with those exact capabilities. The skills that Fedor now has were once deemed as humanistic skills, but Fedor's ability to mimic those skills make them much less humanistic. And this is Norman. Norman looks terrifying, and that might be because he is the world's first psychopath AI. Yeah, he was created for that very purpose, actually. In an experiment by the MIT Media Lab, the Media Lab wanted to see how introducing human bias and thoughts would influence the thoughts and the um, neural network system of artificial intelligence. So in this experiment, they exposed Norman to a number of dark corners on Reddit. And that sounds a little bit funny and strange. But in doing so, Norman was exposed to dark concepts including death and violence. Then, Norman was asked to analyze a number of inkblot tests. And in one inkblot test, where most AIs saw things like vases of flowers, Norman saw a man being shot dead. Norman's thoughts were formulated on his own, and they symbolize a shift in human ethics. As humans, we're becoming so involved and invested in our creations that we're losing a little bit of touch with things that make us human, like our morality and our morals. And finally, we have Sophia. Many of you may be familiar with Sophia as she is a humanoid created by Hansen Robotics. Now just one year after Sophia's activation, she gained citizenship in Saudi Arabia. No, I'm not joking. Sophia gained citizenship in a country where even today many women and immigrants still struggle to obtain the rights that they deserve. It took mankind centuries worth of fighting, struggling, and suffering to get the citizenship that declared them unique from the beings around them. But it took artificial intelligence just 100 years to get that exact same citizenship. It took Sophia one year of existence, and not even suffering, just of existence, to get citizenship that put her on an equal level as human beings. And not only that, but it took her one year to appear on the Jimmy Fallon late night talk show. And that's, a, that's pretty impressive. But I want you to think about that for a second. I want you all to sit back and think about Sophia's accomplishments. And now I want you to shift your thinking to something else. I want you all to think about the fact that all of the AIs I've mentioned in today's talk are considered to be in their early most forms. Because the only form of artificial intelligence to exist today is considered weak artificial intelligence. So if this is the case, what does strong artificial intelligence look like? What comes next in this rapid evolution of intellect? This is where I introduce a concept known as artificial superintelligence. Artificial superintelligence is a species of AI that does not exist today, but its existence is very probable in the near future. And in the presence of superintelligence, artificial superintelligence would exceed human intelligence by as much as human intelligence exceeds that of snails. We would be to AI as snails are to us. In addition, artificial superintelligence would be able to outsmart mankind and outperform mankind, as well as mimic the social skills and the creativity of humans. That's right. Artificial superintelligence would be able to have social skills and creativities that make those skills a little less unique to humans. So I ask you, what happens when AIs like Norman and Fedor reach the point of superintelligence? What will these AIs be capable of doing and thinking? What will AIs like Sophia be capable of wanting and getting? I like to think that we will not find an answer to these questions unless we do three simple things. And those are to control, adapt, and coexist. As humans, we are responsible for the technology that is evolving around us because those technologies are our own creation. Right now, we are creating with such rapid speeds, we're almost forgetting why we are creating and where those creations are going. 
I like to think of it as a race in the middle of a desert. You see, there's two cars in the middle of a desert, and in one is mankind, and in the other is technology. And we are in the lead, which is amazing. And that's almost all we seem to care about. We're in first place. But we must remember that we don't know where we are going. We are in the middle of a desert, and we don't know where the end is, if there is an end. We must also adapt. Prior to the arrival of the modern day humans, this earth was occupied by our ape-like ancestors. And it's too late, it's too late to um, prevent technology from changing who we are and what we live for, because we've set this earth for ourselves. But it's not too late to adapt those changes. I like to refer to a concept described by physicist Stephen Hawking, in which Hawking compares a human being to an ant. You see, when we, we come across ants, we don't see them as threats. We don't go out of our way to kill them. But once ants step in the way of our progression, we don't even hesitate to demolish populations at a time. Let's change our skills, our values, our goals to align with those of artificial intelligence in order to prevent our species from interfering with the progression of technology. In doing so, we would set up an environment for positivity and coherence and coexistence. And finally, we must coexist. Like I was saying earlier, prior to our arrival on this earth, this earth was occupied by our ape-like ancestors. But when we came here, we took the power from them. We made this earth our home, and we never shared it. It's not a bad thing to think about sharing this earth with technology. We can set up an environment in which both technology and mankind can live in coherence, and in this way, we would be united and safe. We can also look to take the skills and the abilities of humans and combine those with those of technology. Because we don't know when technology is going to stop progressing, so we may as well use it to our advantage. And as technology continues to progress, and our talk here today ends, I leave you with one final question to think about. How long will humans maintain the authority in their relationship with artificial intelligence? Thank you. <laughs>